It rubs the brown fans on the skin. It does this whenever it's told. It rubs the brown fans on the skin or else it gets the hose again. This is the loud fans in the basket. Yes, she will, precious. She'll get the hose. If you're running a 3D printer in your home or office, fan noise can be distracting and annoying. So in today's episode, I'll be showing you how to make your printer run whisper quiet by installing silent fans. Speaking of fans, if you're a fan of my content, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell down there. Alright, let's start by taking some baseline measurements of how loud this printer is in its stock configuration. As you can hear, or probably not hear, this one's already been upgraded and it's printing right now super quietly. But let's travel back in time to before this printer was modded. I'm doing a sound comparison between my Ender 3 S1 and my Ender 3 B2. My sound meter is recording about 53 decibels. Now we're over at my Ender 3 B2 and it looks like about 52 or 53 decibels. I was kind of hoping that the S1 would be a little bit quieter but that's not the case. So my idea here was to have this mount that just bolts onto the side and it holds a 40 millimeter Noctua fan over here and a 40 by 20 blower motor over here and that provides all of your hot end and part cooling needs. Whatever fan you install here is going to blow air through this little hole. But if there's enough interest I can make another version using a 5015 fan or one of these massive 120 millimeter fans. So let me know in the comments if you want to see either of those design variations. If we hide both of these fans you can see this thing has a relatively simple construction. If you want to print this out yourself, make sure to turn on support material and check this option to support on the build plate only. I would recommend using PETG for this print to make sure that this part of the fan duct doesn't get melted by the hot end. This is all put together with M3 bolts. And I'll leave a link in the description to a toolkit that I use that has all of these in it. I'm just going to come in from the side here and use these two bolt holes. And if I loosen this up a little bit, I should be able to slide this up and down. You basically want the cooler lined up so that it's shooting just below the heater block. Now I just need to figure out the wiring. Remember that Noctua follows the ATX standard, so yellow is 12 volts and black is ground. Once you've added enough layers of shrink tube to conceal the fact that you don't know how to do wiring properly, you can hit it with a torch. Now if you don't like the idea of cutting the connectors off of these Noctua fans, we can also make an adapter that will reduce the voltage from 24 to 12 volts and it'll let you keep the original plugs on your fans. If you buy a Noctua fan, it comes with all these adapters and you can salvage these plugs off the ends. So in my case, I'm going to be cutting up this Y cable adapter and putting a Zener diode in it. So I'm just going to cut this end of the connector off. Then I'm going to cut off enough of this wire to fit this Zener diode inside of here. The funny thing about Zener diodes is you want to install them in reverse. So you want the negative end to be facing the positive end of the power supply. I'm going to add a bunch of layers of heat shrink to this black wire because it's going to be right next to this Zener diode which is going to get pretty hot. So these layers of heat shrink are acting like insulation and they're going to protect this wire. By leaving the leads of this Zener diode long, it won't be transferring enough heat from the Zener diode over to this soldered joint. So it won't be able to harm that soldered joint. So if you look here, I got some 1.25 millimeter JST connectors. They're the really small connectors that are used on the breakout board. And you'll see that the polarity of these wires is switched. So I need to remember that when I wire this up. So now we have our simple little voltage converting device. So we plug it into a 24 volt source here and we get a 12 volt source out over here. And all of that excess energy is burned up by that Zener diode. Oh yep, yeah, there we go. The fan's running. This is a nice and quiet fan too. Wiring up the 24 volt blower fan is much simpler. You don't need to add any resistors to change the voltage. So these new fans are all installed. Everything looks good. Now I'm going to turn my attention down to the base of the machine. I'm going to be using this giant Noctua fan in my build because it's incredibly quiet and efficient. This only uses 0.85 watts. Just to put that in perspective, this tiny blower fan that I just took off uses about 2 watts. If you try blowing through this mesh, you can't even get the fan to spin. So that's giving you some indication of how much it's slowing the air down. 
I'm gonna remove this grating to improve airflow. These tools have a tendency to break, and when they break, they send a chunk of metal flying that could easily blind you. So you definitely wanna be wearing safety glasses, because if you go blind, you won't be able to watch my videos anymore, and that'd be a real tragedy. I'm gonna do the same thing for the motherboard fan over here. I should have taken this fan off first. It was kinda of in the way and I ended up cutting myself oh, a little bit. I just finished nibbling this hole out. Now keep in mind, you can use these same basic metalworking techniques to install any size fan that you want. Since this power supply is already fully enclosed when you have the bottom panel installed, I'm gonna remove the power supply's own panel. Now be very careful when you're doing this because the power supply has powerful capacitors. These are the heat sinks that I'm gonna to use to replace the old ones. And I've already taken two of these stepper motor drivers heat sinks off. And the way I remove these is just give them a little twist and they come right off. So just get some 80 proof potato vodka, take a swig for good measure, and then clean off those Trinamic stepper drivers. So that all looks good to me. Just one large fan, and some upgraded heat sinks on the stepper drivers. This fan is being powered off of this buck converter. And the nice thing about this 5 volt fan is it runs on the same power as a Raspberry Pi. So if I want to upgrade this to Clipper or put Octoprint on here later, I already have the 5 volt power to make that happen. I'm just going to put these squash ball feet on. I'm going to use a T-slot nut here. Ow! Yeah, the fan's spinning down there so everything's working as intended. So it's saying 38 to 39 decibels. Seems like most of the noise is coming from the X and Y axis stepper motors. So if I installed some stepper dampers, I could get the noise of this machine down even more. I printed this whole thing out with no part cooling at about 20 cubic millimeters per second. So fast prints and super silent. Oh, yep, the PEI bed works perfectly. I came down to check on this print and I thought it failed because it looks like it's just printing in midair like it had some kind of nozzle clog. But if you look under there, Everything's fine. I can always turn my fans down in my slicer settings if I want this thing to run more quietly, but right now I'm just going for maximum performance. It passed all the bridging tests. It did a great job on the stringing tests. This is at 1.2 millimeters of retraction. All of these features look quite good and precise, and it did a great job on these overhang tests. You can go all the way up to 80 degrees of overhang. That's crazy. This printer is quite impressive. Let's take a look at the audio test results. As you can see from the test data, stock Ender-3s are quite loud, and they don't even have that good of part cooling. With these new fans installed, I tested the printer at various part cooling fan settings. As you can see, when the part cooling fan is turned off, the printer basically makes no noise at all. So if you're running larger prints that don't require part cooling, you can have this thing chugging along at 15 to 30 cubic millimeters per second, making zero noise. And that's pretty awesome. On the other end of the spectrum, I can turn my part cooling fans way up and get insane levels of bridging and overhanging performance. Or you can operate the printer in the Goldilocks zone. With the part cooling fan set to 10 to 15%, it has better part cooling and runs quieter than the stock machine. So it's just better overall. The test results from my thermal imaging show that the temperatures are about the same on the hot end and power supply. I did notice slightly elevated temperatures on the motherboard and stepper drivers. And there is one specific IC on the motherboard that ran 20 degrees hotter. I'll just add a heat sink to that component so it runs a little cooler. So what do you think? Will you be upgrading your printer to silent fans? Let me know in the comments below. I'll leave links in the description to all the parts and tools I used in this episode, including this 3D printed fan mount. So check those out if you're interested in doing any of these mods to your printer. And thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next episode. This is with the part cooling fan on at 100%. 50%, 25%, 10%, part cooling fan off, and this is with the machine turned off.